Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I decided to bring this video where I'm going to go over three different things you can do to improve as a React developer. Now, as I've mentioned in many of my videos where I go over best practices or just coding in general, there is no certain like correct way to write code. No one has ever written perfect code because that idea doesn't exist. However, um, I believe that many of you guys who are watching my videos um, are watching because you guys want to get a job in the industry. And for that reason, I want to base all of my opinions on the board that is set by industry standards. So everything that I will be talking to you guys will help you guys um, improve and get closer Closer to what a good react developer uh, should be doing uh, whilst working in the programming industry we have right now and if you guys could leave a like before we get into the video I would massively appreciate it because it would help push my videos to more people and allow me to continue making content for you guys which is something that I love so I would massively appreciate it if you guys could do that and yeah with that in mind let's get into the video Well, the first thing that I really want to talk about, and I feel like this will definitely um, improve your level by a lot if you're not currently doing this or you're currently not familiar with this. And basically what I'm talking about is knowing when it is necessary to really manage your state in a React application. And what do I mean by that is basically there are different um, state management libraries and different ways that you can manage your state uh, in your application. And for smaller projects in React with few components, it is totally okay for you to not even really need to um, put a lot of work into uh, state management because um, you can easily just manage your states locally in each component. And if you want to access uh, a state from a component in another component, you can just pass that state through props right and that's very common in the beginning and I see a lot of intermediate developers who's been coding in react and has put um, off learning um, either the context API or learning how to work with Redux um, just basically passing their their states through props um, until it gets very messy on and unorganized and that's the point that I want to make here uh, you really need to know when it is necessary or when it's a good time to actually use one of the tools that are provided to us either by react or by other other libraries um, to manage your states uh, in a in an easier and more organized manner. Now, I don't care. I personally don't care which state management tool you're using. I love using Context API. I also love using Redux, uh, despite me already criticizing Redux in the past. I do have videos on it, um, and it's 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 an it's an interesting way to 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 manage your state. And I also don't really care if you know how to to work with those tools because learning how to use a, a library is not the hardest part in my opinion it is actually harder to know when you should use that and when you shouldn't so what i would say is for example if you find yourself um, in a situation where you have some sort of folder or a group of components that are currently independently working with each other. Um, each one of them have their own states and they, they communicate with each other. Um, it's totally fine for not um, working with state management unless it gets to a point where, for example, you start either passing states through two different components. So for example, I have a component which is a parent of another component which is right below it and then there's another component right below the middle one and I have to pass states from the top one to the bottom that's a red flag right there and you should start using some sort of state management um, library or some sort of state management tool to to to, pre to prevent you from passing those states through props or if you find yourself in a situation where you start having a bunch of sibling components right next to each other and you have to pass for each of those sibling components the state from the parents as props and uh, those situations it seems kind of you won't find yourself in that situation that much but you will and um, I'm, I put some illustrations here just so you can see how we, how common this is uh, but basically I've, I find myself with that all the time and when I get to some to that point I definitely decide to either create a context for that group of components or if I'm using Redux, I just implement those states in my Redux store. So I just wanted to point that out. It is an extremely important skill that I believe a lot of developers who are in the beginner to intermediate levels still haven't mastered. And I feel like if you take your time to either review the topic about state management or just um, practice more by building more applications, you'll get good at it. 
now with that in mind, um, I want to transition to the second um, tip that I want to give to you guys, which I've mentioned in a video that I made in the past, which I'm, I'm linking in the description, which I talk about um, React best practices, but I didn't really go into much in depth about it. Um, basically, uh, what I'm talking about is um, using uh, custom hooks to your advantage. And I personally found myself um, having to deal with this a lot in my previous job where I worked at Twitch as a, as, a, as a full stack intern. And throughout the internship process, I found myself creating custom hooks a lot, a lot more than I used to. And that really opened my, my eyes to it because being able to just reuse a hook is one of the most beautiful things in React. And I know it sounds weird, but honestly, when you create a hook that is reusable and you keep reusing it um, to many different situations without having to copy and paste in code, um, it definitely gives a different fe like feeling to your code. It makes it so much more organized, especially if you're dealing with stuff like um, making API calls or um, making graphics GraphQL calls if you're if you're using GraphQL, um, it is extremely uh, beneficial for you to create a custom hook that might be spread out into different components, and so that you don't really need to um, reuse it every time you need to. And I'm gonna try to display here on the screen um, the different types of situations that I feel like you might want to use a custom hook, and if you find yourself ever in one of those situations, uh, you might want to rethink your code and try to see if you can try to migrate a uh, code that you're kind of copy and pasting currently um, into creating a custom hook that can be reused many times throughout your components. Now, talking by personal experience, I used to find it useless. And actually, I used to find every single method that I'm listing out in this video, everything related to making your code more organized kind of useless because I used to think that code is code. You don't just care about the final product. You just care about um, what is being presented. And I didn't really think about the difference between uh, a good developer and a bad developer. But this is one of the biggest mistakes I, I, I've made in my journey so far because uh, I got to it got to a point where I could only work with myself. And and that's not a good thing. Um, I'm trying to explain to you guys that uh, creating something like a custom hook for reusing um, code in your in your application might seem redundant if you're working on your own. But the point of this video is to try to improve your code so that it matches industry standard. And in a real job, you will be working with a team unless it is like a, a one team startup, which I, I, I don't I don't know, it, it should still pre probably be trying to write um, good code if they want to survive for long. But basically, we'll always be trying to write code that will have to to be reviewed by other people. So why not try to make their job easier so that you can push that code uh, to production as fast as you can and people in the future who are trying to look at that code can actually understand what you're writing and can see the value and the and, and how well you wrote your code. So with that in mind, I'm also gonna list out uh, some references of um, videos that I have where I go over creating custom hooks so that if you're interested in learning how to create one, you can just check them out um, and, and learn how to use them. So that was basically it for the second piece of advice that I wanted to give to you guys. Now, the third advice that I want to give to you guys, it's kind of um, like a, like two things mashed together because I really wanted to make this video be about three things that will help you write better React code instead of four because I feel like three is a better number in the title than four. But bottom line, uh, the third tip is basically um, using uh, tools such as testing libraries and um, linters. So the reason why I left those two for last is because I feel like many people already might have expected me to say something like this. And um, and I just wanted to emphasize that there is a reason why big companies um, test their code and why big companies actually use linters, for example. I'll tackle each of them individually. Um, first, let's talk about um, testing your code. Um, in React specifically, there's uh, a few libraries that you can use, such as the React testing library, which is a very famous uh, library in React, which allows you to um, test your React code and test uh, if like components have been rendered correctly. You can test to see if functions are returning the correct piece of information. You can even, you can even test API calls. So it's it's very powerful, and you can match it up with other uh, testing libraries as well. Um, like notably, there is Enzyme, there is Jest. Uh, there's many different tools that you can use to test your code in React. And uh, I'll give you guys a, a story, a really quick story. Uh, when I was in my previous job, there was a, a wrote a, a piece of code, a component, and I, I never thought I was going to ever reach a situation like this, but I was making, a, 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 like I wrote a function, and I thought that it was working perfectly, because when you write a function, there's no way it's going to be wrong, right? 
um, well, no, it was wrong, and I it was a, it was a minor mistake. Which uh, if I had like if I didn't actually test my code, if I didn't write a, a test case for that specific piece of code, I wouldn't have noticed, and I would have um, put some code not to production because it might have been caught by by someone reviewing the code, but uh, it would probably give a bad impression, right? Writing some code that doesn't actually work perfectly. So testing out my code helped a lot, and even if you're not at a, at a job right now. I would exercise this skill so much because it will make you be so much ahead from others because you will need to do this in your job and uh, it, it will just look good if you already know how to do it. Now, linters is a bit different because it isn't really something that you need to learn how to use. Um, and there's many different options you can use. Basically, it's just a tool that provides um, consistency between um, the code that you write throughout your whole application. Well, this goes um, from even the minor stuff to the, the bigger stuff. So if I'm talking about something that is uh, minor is, for example, uh, if someone writes a code and defines a string with double quotes, then throughout the whole application, you should be using double quotes. And if you're using single quotes, the whole application should be using single quotes. You shouldn't be mixing them around because then it wouldn't be consistent. Same thing with um, semicolons. JavaScript doesn't require you to use semicolons, but if you're using it in one line, why would you not use in the other one? You better want to make your code as consistent as possible because consistency correlates with um, organized code. So I would just say that this is a very important factor. Now, a good tool that I could recommend to help you do something like this is obviously ESLint is the most, it's probably the most famous tool out there. Um, when you have something like that, you can run commands in your application and it will run through all of your code and check to see um, if any of the lines of code um, actually does like doesn't match the way that you predefined. So for example, if I'm if I define my application to only have single quotes, if I have a double quote anywhere, it should tell us. And it's just another step to providing a more organized and more consistent um, code, right? So it's it's something important. And I'm going to leave the link to the website in the description. If you want to check it out, it is very famous and really useful. Now, this is basically it for the three different tips that I really wanted to talk about. If you have any questions about any of them, feel free to ask down below. You know that I like answering and talking to my community. So if you have any questions down below, just ask it and I'll, and I'll be happy to help you guys. So um, leave any comments as well, uh, saying any other things that you think uh, related to this topic, like what other tips you would give to other developers. And yeah, that's, that's basically it. I really hope you guys enjoyed it and I see you guys next time.